Jesus will bring you out of your stagnation. Let me explain what stagnation is or what being in a position of being stagnant is. Stagnation or stagnant comes from the Latin word for pool. Say pool. Can I come down? I want to talk to you a little bit today. Amen. Amen. So stagnant means what? Pool. And that pool means, that, you know, when you have a pool of water in your garden or, or, or you go to a swimming pool. So stagnant means pool. And did you know what pool means in the Bible? Pool means, say, baraka. When you see the word pool in Hebrew, it means baraka. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And as long as the pool is treated, that pool will become a blessing. But what the enemy wants to do is to corrupt the pool and turn it from a blessing into a curse. So the enemy wants the pool to be stagnant, but God wants the pool to be baraka, to be a blessing. Hallelujah. You see, when the pool is stagnant, it can get very, very dangerous. In fact, back in 1976, there was a, a, a conference in America Boulevard Hotel and so many people got sick of what? Legionnaire's disease. And what caused Legionnaire's disease is stagnant water. And Jesus is said, come out of the stagnant water and go into Baraka. You see, when we are stagnant, the enemy can come in and infest us. Amen. Because stagnant water causes all kinds of things, mosquitoes, vermin, germs, all kinds of things. That's what happens. But God says, the enemy wants you to be stagnant where you are. You see, if you're not moving forward, that is also used as stagnant. But God says, tell my people today, I am here in the midst to bring them out of their stagnation, but bring them into Baraka. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. In fact, I'm going to show you a picture of stagnant water. Stagnant water is very unhealthy and is not advisable to drink. Would you drink from this water? In fact, it's still called a pool. Would you drink from this pool? No. If you drink from this pool, you are surely to get ill. Amen. Amen. Because it is not water that is drinkable. And stagnant water is a thing that it cannot get out. It cannot flow. Do you know if you keep this gospel to yourself, it becomes stagnant. <laughs> when you keep the gospel for yourself and you don't spread it and you isolate it, it becomes stagnant. This gospel is meant to be spread to every single person. Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Oh God, hallelujah. Teaching them to observe all things what I have taught you and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So Jesus is calling us out of stagnant water into Baraka. Now, when the pool is treated well, when the pool is looked after, water can flow in and then now and again it must be let out. So fresh water can come. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why Jesus says, if you believe in me, out of your bellies shall flow. Did he say shall be stagnant? He says, shall flow rivers of living water. Stagnant water will make somebody sick. But living streams and living waters that flows from us, that is given to us by the Holy Ghost, will bring somebody deliverance and healing. Amen. Amen. 
So is there something in your life that is stagnant? Hallelujah. Is your finances stagnant? Is relationship stagnant? Is your walk with God stagnant? You see, that's exactly what the devil wants. But in the name of Jesus, we're going to trample on snakes and scorpions today. I was amazed to learn that with stagnant water, do you know your shower head? Your shower head. Apparently, if that is not turned on often, hot and cold, and it's not cleaned, it builds up lime scale, and that can cause legionnaire's disease when it is breathed in. During the pandemic, they told all businesses, they said, listen, make sure that you can go into your offices often, at least once a week, and turn the taps on to let it run. Am I right? Because they said, otherwise, even though the water is good, say the water is good. If it is left doing nothing, it becomes stagnant. And stagnation is very, very serious. If you drink it, or if you smell it, it's serious. Amen. Hallelujah. So God was showing me a pattern. God was saying to me, listen. There are some people who you're going to be speaking to today. Oh, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Who are in a state of stagnation. They can't move forward. They can't move back. They can't move left. They can't move to the right. And God said, because they need to come out of it. Sometimes we're in stagnation because of our own sin. Sometimes we're in stagnation because we isolate ourselves. Sometimes we're in stagnation because we don't want to read the Bible. We're in stagnation because we don't pray. We're in stagnation for many, many reasons. But either way, God said, oh glory, hallelujah. I want to use the people. I want to use them. But the water that they're bringing out is stagnant. You see, we need to be able to know that the Holy Spirit is the one who gives fresh water, fresh drinking water. No wonder he said to the woman at the well, hallelujah, I can give you water to drink that you will never thirst again. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so we're going to look at the scripture. People felt stagnant. But do you know what changed their state of stagnation? When they hear the word of God and they obey it. Hearing the word of God and obeying it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We must not be complacent in the house of God. There is much work to do. In fact, the Bible says, listen, do not forsake the assembling of God's people. And he says, especially that the time is drawing near. We're going to read one verse in Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 12. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees. Do you know what that means? Those men who are complacent. Those, not just men, but men and women who are complacent. God says, I don't like complacency. You see, the reason why the pool becomes stagnant and becomes a curse is because nobody has treated the pool. Are you hearing it? So God says, stop being complacent. I will do this when I want. I will read the Bible when I want to read the Bible. I will pray when I want to pray. I will come to church when I want to come to church. I will sing when I want to sing. God says, I don't like it. I'm going to search it out. Can I tell you what the Lord says? Hallelujah. God says, I'm going to search it out and I'm going to find them because the men are settled on their knees. They're complacent. That word leaves means complacent. That say in their heart, oh, the Lord will not do good, neither 
we need to do evil. Oh my God. So this people think, I'm okay, I can do what I want. Because God won't do any evil to me. And God won't do any good to me. He will just leave me alone. But God says no. God says, I'm going to search you out with the candles. Lord, I give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Thus saith the Lord. I have sent the word. Do not take it lightly. Saith the Lord God. In your mind and in your thought. I don't know the Holy Spirit drops in my spirit. I am sending the word to bring you healing. And to bring you deliverance. But you are taking it lightly. God says no. I have sent the word to bring you deliverance and healing. Do you know something? You could have the best job in the world. The best payment in the world. The best house in the world. But you can still be stagnant. <laughs> oh, Some people think oh if I just get a house. I'll be okay. It just brings up more problems, to be honest. Or if I can only just get a good job, it'll be okay. It just brings up more problems sometimes. But God says, listen, I want you to come out of the state of stagnancy. So God, first of all, is watching to see if you're going to be complacent. We cannot be complacent. Well, thousands of people per day are dying and going to a Christless hell. Amen. And we know the truth. We have to spread the gospel. In Jesus name. Exodus chapter 1. Verse 8 to 14. Now. There arose a new king over Egypt. Which knew not Joseph. And he said unto the people. Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mighty than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when they fall out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us and set them up out of the land. Therefore... They did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Pithom and Ramesses. Verse 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar, in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve with rigor. I want to go back to verse 11. The Bible says when they were growing and getting mightier, Pharaoh said, I want to build two cities. One is going to be called Pithom, and one is going to be called Ramesses. The word Pithom means a house unto their God. That wasn't our God, Yahweh. It was to their God. Their God was called Atom, A-T-U-M. They used to serve that God. I want you to understand what I'm saying here, because I'm talking about coming out of stagnation. Amen. And Ramesses means a child of the sun. S-U-N, a child of the sun. S-U-N, a child of S-U-N, the sun. And so what Pharaoh was trying to do was to try to slow the Israelites down by making them work and build a house unto their God. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Praise God. Can I come down again? And God laid on my heart. He said that when you find yourself in stagnation what the enemy does he makes you work harder for them so you're doing everything to build up what you think needs to be built up and at the same time you're under burden and you're under rigor and God said tell the people that it's now time to start building Pithom and Ramesses and build the house of God Amen. 
We're doing our own thing and not building the house of God. God then spoke to Moses at the burning bush. Hallelujah. And he said to Moses, Moses, take your shoes off your feet for the place where you're standing is holy ground. And God gave Moses a job to do. Go and bring the people out of Egypt so that they may worship me and serve me. They were serving the God Atom, building Pithom and Ramesses. Now God says, come out of that man. I want you to build and serve me. But as they were coming out of Egypt, behind them was the army of Egyptians coming after them. And one side was a mountain. And the other side was a mountain. And in front of them was the sea. And the people of God, Israelites, cried unto Moses, and I paraphrase, and I said, he said, Moses, did you bring us out here to kill us? We were better off in Egypt. Don't let the devil fool you. You're not better off in Egypt. Don't let the enemy fool you. You are not better off in Egypt. It may seem good, but it's not good. Amen. And then the Bible said that as... The Egyptians came after them. The Bible said that the people threatened Moses. And God said, Moses, why are you crying unto me? Speak thou to the children of Israel and that they may go what? Forward. I come today with a mandate from the Lord. God is saying, come out of your stagnation and move forward. Move forward. Come on. Let the past stay in the past. And move forward. Amen. We are stagnant because some of us are bitter. We are stagnant because we won't forgive. We are stagnant because we are full of pride. But God said, tell the people to move forward. Live in hope. Come on. Let's move forward. Amen. The Bible said that Moses heard the word of God. And Moses lifted up his rod and the sea parted. Although there was in a stagnant situation with everything blocked in, God opened up the way for them to go through. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you feeling stagnant today? God is saying today is a day, hallelujah, where I'm going to bring you out of that state of stagnation in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Ezra chapter 4, verse 1 to 6, he said, Now the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. Verse 2. Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us help build with you. Amen. Amen. Can I say something? Be careful who you allow to build with you. Because when you think they're building, behind your back, they're tearing you down. My God, they're tearing you down. Amen. They're smiling in front of your face. But behind your back, they're tearing you down. But may the Lord reveal your enemies to you. That you may be able to walk wisely. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So the Bible said they wanted to build with them. Let us build with you for we seek your God as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him in the days of Eshahadon, king of Ashur, which he brought us out hither. But Zerubbabel said, and Jeshua and the rest of the chief fathers said, Unto them, you have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God. But we ourselves together will build unto Yahweh, God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, hath commanded us. Now look at this verse 4. Then the people of the land <laughs> weaken the hand of the people of praise. Are you getting it? And trouble them. Oh my God, my God. I feel the anointing here. Let me tell you something. There are people who don't mean you very good. They mean you well, but not very well. But thanks be to God. 
I pray that you understand what I'm saying here. Is that they wanted to build with them, but it was a hoax. Zerubbabel discerned it long time. That's why the gift of discernment is very important. Those same people who wanted to build with them, that began to weaken their hand and trouble them in building. Verse 5. And hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Put your hand on yourself. Put your hand on yourself. And say, he who began a good work in me is faithful to complete it. Believe it. Amen. You're going to get some fight. You're going to get some frustration. You're going to feel like tearing your hair out, metaphorically speaking. Amen. But I tell you this. God will not allow them to stop or frustrate your purpose. Oh, glory, hallelujah. God has called me with a purpose. Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. He's called me to heal the sick and to give sight to those who are blind. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Frustration will come in, but they won't stop me. Amen. Frustration will come, but they won't stop you. Amen. Amen. And in the reign of Assyrius, in the beginning of the reign, they wrote unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. Hold it there. Do you know what the name Satan means? <laughs> Satan means accuser. Amen. Of the brethren. We're going to jump down now to the two last verses. It's Ezra chapter 4 verse 23 and 24. He said, Now when a copy of the king, Ezekiel's letter had read before Rehob, and Shibshai, the scribe, their companions, they went up in haste to Jerusalem unto the Jews and listen, and made them cease by power and force. I'm talking about stagnation. Amen. It made them stop. You know, sometimes the enemy throws a spanner in the works and you have to Stop or slow down what you're doing. But listen, God says, I'm going to bring you out of that stagnation. Amen. 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 Verse 24 says, and the work ceased. Now, when there was building for Pharaoh's God, the work was hard and rigorous and they were kept on going. Because the devil knows how to give us work to keep us going. Let me say it again. I said, the devil knows how to give you work so that you'll be working for him and you don't realize it. But when it comes to the house of God, the work ceased, which was in Jerusalem. So it ceased in the second year. Many, many years it ceased. But listen to this. What can bring you out of stagnation? A word from God. A word from God. And I've come with a word from God. Hallelujah. I send my word to bring you healing, said the Lord God. Amen. Hallelujah. So in the next chapter, Ezra chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Then the prophets Haggai and the prophet Zechariah, son of Edom, prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of God of Israel even unto them. Let me just add in here. They heard the prophecy and then Zerubbabel and the son of Shittiel and Jeshua the son of Jezadak and began to build the house of God in Jerusalem and the prophets were with them helping them. Wow. So they heard one prophecy from Haggai and Zechariah. Let me give you one of the prophecies. It's not recorded here, but it's recorded in Zechariah. And it's Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6. It says, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, 
It's not by might. Hallelujah. It's not by your might. It's not by your power. Because Zerubbabel was a powerful man of God. But it's not by your might nor by your power. But by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt be, become plain. You shall become... Whatever is in front of you that is stopping you, God is going to trample it down with his feet. Oh my God. Can I shout hallelujah? Shout hallelujah. Whatever is stopping you, God is going to trample it down. Trample it down. Come on now. May the Lord trample every plan of the enemy. May the Lord trample every works of the enemy. May the God trample every word that the enemy spoke over you negatively. We refuse it. We reject it. We turn it around. We annul it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You shall bring forth the headstone. You shall bring it forth. We shouting, grace, grace unto it. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters. We don't want to get spiritual legionnaire's disease. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It's not good. Yes. In fact, they liken it onto worse than COVID. Amen. Amen. And the worst it can do is give you pneumonia and then it can take your life. Yeah. Can I say that? Make sure your spiritual taps are turned on. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Make sure. Come on. Oh, uh, make sure your spiritual taps are turned on. Make sure that you it's flowing with water. That no diseases or stagnation can set in. Make sure you're reading the word of God. Make sure you're praying unto God. Make sure you're hearing God clearly. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Make sure you're doing all these things. Because if you don't do these things, it's going to become stagnant. Amen. But God wants your pool to be baraka. You, he wants it to be a blessing. You see, Zerubbabel was at a place where he was stagnant. He couldn't move forward. The children of Israel were at a place where they were stagnant. God gave them the word and the word released the waters. Amen. I want to let somebody know, no matter how big you are, no matter how anointed you are, no matter how you well educated you are, it's not by what I know, it's not by might, nor is it by my power. But it's by God's spirit. Amen. John chapter 2. Where there was a wedding going on. And on the third day there was a marriage in Canaan and Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. <laughs> and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother said unto him, they have no wine. What an embarrassment. Can you imagine? Those who have been married had the reception. And the drinks and the wine is run out. Wouldn't you be embarrassed? I would be embarrassed. Verse 4. And Jesus said unto the woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. And there are six. Hallelujah. And there were set six water pots of stone. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water. You see, those at a stagnant situation, they didn't know what to do. But when they was going over the Red Sea, God spoke and they got through. When they was building the walls of Jerusalem... In Ezra, God spoke. This situation, stagnant, can't move. God is giving the word again. Fill the water pots. Amen. Fill your water pots with water. You haven't got wine right now, but fill it with water. Amen. 
amen when I thank you. So they filled the water pots and they filled it them to the brim. And he said unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. And when the ruler of the feast tasted, listen, God is going to do a miracle right in front of your eyes. And he knew not whence it was. But the servants which drew the water knew. They knew Jesus did it. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Brothers and sisters, God has given me a simple message. God is saying today, today is a day that I want you to come out of your stagnation. Your stagnation of your illness. You've been in that illness for such a long time. God is saying, today, step out. I've sent my word to heal you. Today, you've been in stagnation financially. Step out. Amen. God is saying, I want you to come out. I sent you here today to give you the word. Hallelujah. Out of your belly shall run rivers of living water. Today, I'm giving you living water. Now, the enemy loves stagnant water because he knows nothing's going anywhere. Amen. But God is going to get ready to step into the water and to clean those waters. And you can start afresh with him. Amen. Amen. And he'll turn the stagnant into Baraka, to a blessing. 